to the Sprint 3 demo uh, for the Digital Library of the Middle East uh, Winter 2021 work cycle. I'm going to kick this demo off by talking about some uh, updates uh, made to the homepage. Uh, so one thing we've seen uh, here is we've actually added a link here uh, to the uh, DLME icon in the upper left hand corner and we'll use that here in a little bit. Um, so you'll, you'll, one big thing you'll see is uh, the updates to the homepage uh, to add these uh, scrollable um, browse uh, categories or browse groups. Uh, the browse groups um, add these browse categories in here. And so I can uh, use the arrows here to um, navigate within these uh, to select certain ones. All right, when I navigate to a browse category page, I can see all the items in that, you know, and I can use this uh, link back here to uh, link back to the uh, home page if I, if I wish. Um, so these, all these browse groups being shown here in browse categories are configurable by the exhibit curator and um, allows them to be uh, moved on the page, uh, reconfigured um, and displayed. Uh, so one thing we've also done is we've renamed the uh, browse group page to explore. We can see that here. And the statistics page has also been renamed to contributors. And with that, I want to kick it over to Gary to talk uh, more about some of the result view changes. Yeah, I'm just going to talk quickly about a few of the changes we made uh, to the search results pages. Uh, specifically the gallery view. Um, so right now we're looking at uh, a gallery view results page on the production server. Um, and there were a couple problems that uh, we identified um, with helpful marching um, that could be improved on the, the gallery of results uh, view. Um, one of them was uh, by default in gallery view, um, we either have three or four columns um, in our layout. Uh, here we have three columns. Uh, if we're looking at a browse result, um, a browse category result view, uh, we don't have a sidebar and then we have four across. Um, the problem is our default per page um, choices are always uh, sort of increments of 10 or multiples of 10, and that means the three and four columns never work out where um, no matter what option you choose, it won't fill out the row evenly. So we had this blank space at the bottom of the last row on a page. Um, another slightly, um, uh, a slight sort of visual deficiency of this view is the uh, um, the rows kind of end up feeling a little jumbled. It depends on the height of the different images, but they can be drastically different heights. And so the result just feel a little um, sort of um, chaotic and not, not as well organized as they could be. So I'm gonna switch over to the dev server and just show how we made improvements to both of those aspects. So the first um, thing we did was um, change the per page options uh, to multiples of uh, uh, 12. So basically this enables us to, uh, no matter what option the user chooses, it's a multiple 12, which means whether we're in the regular gallery uh, results view with three columns or if we're in the browse results um, gallery view with four columns, they always um, are able to fill out all uh, columns of the last row. And so uh, that helps uh, fill in that big blank space. Uh, and then the other thing um, that we did to try to improve the, the little, the this, this sort of chaotic uh, arrangement of things is add this uh, background uh, to each of the thumbnails, uh, which kind of gives a little bit stronger container uh, area around each, uh, each item and helps sort of um, make the page feel a little more organized. Uh, another, I'm going back to the production server here uh, with another search results view and gallery view. Uh, another um, thing we fixed uh, or improved here was 
uh, the ability to show metadata in a more uh, controlled way. So here we're not showing any metadata for these items. And one of the reasons we usually don't do that in gallery view is um, it can look a little busy um, because by default, we show the text label of the metadata field. So for example, if we were showing the description metadata field here, we'd have a label called description colon and then the value of that field. And when you have start to have more than you know one or two fields, it starts to look a little busy. Um, but what we've done here, uh, and this is the dev server, uh, we made a change where we, in gallery view only, we hide the metadata label of um, any metadata fields that are shown. So here we're showing the description uh, metadata field. Uh, we may show an additional field or two, but um, none of them will have their metadata label. And we'll just make sure we choose fields that are pretty um, self-explanatory without their um, actual metadata label. Um, and then one last thing I want to show is um, like how we kind of again tried to uh, address the image, the uh, address the uh, challenge of trying to make the the gallery view results look as organized and. Um, clean as possible. Uh, one challenge to that was uh, because there's so many items in DLME and they vary, there's so many different types of items, uh, some of the images um, not infrequently um, have a, either a very wide uh, aspect ratio or in this case uh, a very tall aspect ratio. Um, and so uh, because all the other items in the row, their thumbnail background gets the same height, this can make you know, rows that have a very vertically oriented uh, thumbnail image uh, create a lot of white space in the adjacent uh, items um, and kind of impair the, 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 the cleanliness of the, the, the look. So uh, we address that um, by adding a max height to the thumbnail images in gallery view. Um, and uh, we can tweak this as we go along and, and see more results. Once this gets deployed to prod, we can kind of look a little more closely at the, the variety of results that we have uh, for the, all the items on, on prod. Uh, but right now we're limited to 200 pixels tall, which um, for a tall image like the one we just looked at, this shrinks it down so that the row is much more even. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, that, that value still gives the user uh, enough of a visual clue for these tall items to, to understand what's, what the image is about uh, so they can determine whether they want to proceed on to the item details page to, to see more about it. And that's a summary of the changes to the gallery view. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jesse. Thanks, Gary. Um, so uh, one of the features that we've added that I'd like to uh, show is um, the ability to collapse some metadata fields that are uh, exceeding a particular uh, line length threshold. Um, so as you can see here, and you've probably seen in some of the previous demo, um, some of our uh, longer uh, fields, uh, particularly in the gallery view here, um, that exceed uh, the number of six lines are being uh, collapsed and we are provided a, a toggle, a, a more and less button that will allow us to um, expand and collapse this. Um, so you can actually see in this gallery view, there are plenty here and we're, um, that, that are all being uh, collapsed at, at six lines. Uh, if I click uh, that, um, that button, you'll see I'm given the entire uh, section of metadata and then I can recollapse it. Um, so this works uh, for, you know, for multiple of these on the same page. Uh, we're also doing this on the record view. Um, so you can see here, um, we're, we're, we're seeing more data because the uh, element is wider. So um, there's more data available, but it's still truncated at six lines at my screen resolution. Um, and then I can uh, pop that open to see more. And uh, for this same data, when there is not that many lines, um, so in the case of this record where our description only has um, about two lines, uh, we, we won't be provided that, um, that toggle option. Option, so that, that won't show up um, there. Uh, so far, we've added this in DLME to a couple of fields, uh, to the description field, to the uh, subject field, and um, to the field that holds some of the uh, spatial data available. And um, I'm going to now hand it over to Camille. Okay. Uh, so I want to talk about an update we've made to 
the DLME UI. Uh, so you can see here I'm on the statistics page in English and it's displaying Western Arabic numerals. Uh, if I switch over to Arabic, you'll see that the numbers have been replaced with Eastern Arabic numerals. And so we've tried to do this um, across the UI, but I want to um, point out some exceptions to that. Um, so you can also see here we have a metadata page and where Western Arabic numerals were provided in the metadata, we've preserved that. You can also see Eastern Arabic numerals have been applied to uh, facet counts. And so you can see here in the date range facet that where the user is actually inputting Western Arabic numerals, we have preserved that uh, here in the interface. So thanks so much, Camille. It's worth noting we've been working on a lot more things than the things we demoed today. There's a lot of backend functionality that'll support our um, migration of uh, this work cycle into production, uh, as well as updating our um, uh, frameworks and uh, dependencies to the current versions of everything and kind of uh, making sure we have a smooth transition to production. All right, well, that's all we have. We'll see you next week.